You are now tuned in to Go Time Dolphins with Charlie Touche and Kadeem Simmons, the Miami Dolphins podcast that's for the fans and by the fans. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Don't waste no time. I said it wasn't me. My phone went. Um, so yeah, but it's it's just training camp. But seeing Miami Dolphins players back in the building, seeing clips, you know, of throws, catches, tackles, seeing media availabilities it feels like for the first time in weeks there's actual news but it also means that we are weeks away from you know from meaningful football so on the last episode you said that you could smell football like you can smell football in the air i can taste it like it's like on the tip of my tongue like i haven't been able to, to, to digest it yet but i can definitely taste it um so before we start talking about you know the first few days in training camp, as always, Mr. Ch- they call you, nearly called you Mr. Charlie Touche. Mr. Boss Man, how are you? <laughs> how you doing? Checkbook Charlie, tax back at Touche. Uh, now, nah, man, we good, man. Um, you just said something, and, and you said you could taste it, and I said I could smell it. Smell is 10% of taste, so it works out. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. But, um, man... Christian Wilkins is already in mid-season form. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you guys just got to go check out uh, the Miami Dolphins socials and listen to all the mic ups. You know, Christian Wilkins was out there. And we'll get into it in, in the show. But Christian Wilkins acting like Christian Wilkins. And it's just so refreshing to get football back. Um, and that being said, we made it. We made it through the the off season because you know there's no off season here on Go Time Dolphins, but I cannot wait to get this thing started. It's Go Time Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins podcast that goes not only across the pond but across the world. I'm your boy Charlie Touche. I got my co-host Kadeem Simmons with me. It's always for the fans and by the fans. Your favorite podcast, favorite podcast. Hey, Jalen Waddle comes out with the orange jersey. And for those unfamiliar with what the orange jersey is, it's the standout player of practice, uh, of the previous practice, I think. And Jalen Waddle was donning the orange jersey. First thing I thought of was, I wonder what's on his playlist. What you got, Kadeem? What, 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 what do you think was on Jalen Waddle's pr- playlist? I've seen it. It's a bunch of rappers that I haven't heard of, but... The one thing I've noticed is that, obviously being in the UK, the rap music that makes it over to the UK is one thing. There are so many rap artists in the US who never even sniffed the UK scene. So I think there was a little Baby song. I know who little Baby is, and I think he had a little Wayne song on there. Every other artist, I was like, yeah, this, it's not, f- no, no, that's not for me. I just could not tell you what you know what these songs were bro what the people want to know is what were there any slow jams on it Kadeem? did we have any r&b music on Jalen waddle's playlist listen Jalen waddle was practice player of the day he chose his music when i'm practice player of the day or pod member of the day i choose my playlist like, <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not slandering you know his playlist i'm just saying i hadn't heard of some of some of the guys like that's all I think Alec Ingold, he was, he must have been factor player of the day from the last session because he was the first person in training camp to wear the orange jersey once they actually got underway. And um, I think he started with House of Pain Jump Around, which is a good one to, you know, to start off with, get people hyped and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, like that first song is a, is a tone setter. I'm not saying I'd start with R&B. Like I wouldn't do that, you know. I I I get people happy, you know. You're, you're doing your your jogging and stuff like that. But when we're stretching, you know, just something something mellow, something something a bit calmer. That's 
that, that's what I'm saying. I really just asked if he had R and B on the playlist because I didn't know. <laughs> but but according to your answer, I'm pretty sure he didn't, man. Um there was a and talking about the Miami Dolphin socials, bro. Check your posts. We back. Check, check the posters, man. Listen, when Mike McDaniel speaks, he, when he speaks, I trust it, bro. Like, I'm sold. Remember, we're like, oh, we don't know if he's going to, and we wonder how he's going to, and what happens when, and if this happens, uh, is how's he going to respond? Like, nah, bro. When Mike McDaniel, when Coach McDaniel speaks, I'm sold. Like, I'm like, yeah, let's do it, Coach. Whatever you say, boss. And it's, it's, there's not a lot of coaches in the league. And we're not even talking about previous Dolphin coaches. We're talking about current NFL coaches. There aren't too many coaches in the league that get that same response. Like, when some of these coaches talk, it's like, all right, bro, your days are numbered. Like, I'm not buying none of this. And even when, if the coaches' days aren't numbered, you're still not buying some of it. Some of these coaches are like, yeah, I don't know how you got this job, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I listen to Coach McDaniel, and even even before we hired him, it, there was this intrigue, and I think I speak for the entire Dolphin. I was gonna say Dolphin Twitter, but all the Dolphin fans when 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 I say yeah, you're intrigued by what Coach McDaniel can bring to the to the Dolphins, especially on offense. But then you just gotta imagine if someone has nine hundred thousand of anything. 900,000 of anything, you got to believe this person is committed to whatever that thing is. And for those who don't know, I'm alluding to he had 900,000 uh, edits of film for teaching points. That's not a rough number. It's like it's 900,000. So this man had a million clips like, yo, we got to fix this. We got to fix this. We could fix that. This is a teach moment. We. 900 can you count the 900,000 Kadeem? I'm just saying, right? So with that being said, I, I hope you can. But I, with that being said, it's like he's he's committed. And these aren't teaching points of the Dolphins. This is just throughout his coaching career. And when someone showed it to him, he like, "Hey coach, you know you got 900,000 of these things?" He like, "Wow, I had no idea." So yeah, man, when coach McDaniel speaks, man, I, I'm 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 here for it. It's funny you mentioned the um the, cl the clips thing. I can't remember which player said it, but when they returned to tra to training camp, he had clips of players working out during the off season, and he was saying, you know, basically praising and highlighting the players for the work they've done in their spare time. There's certain players in the league, certain quarterbacks who have to have it in their contract, you know, to work outside of, you know, the building. And we will get to that later because that certain quarterback had an impromptu press conference basically saying he works off the field. But that's another thing. Um, Yeah, it's one of those things where I'm still... I'm, I'm in no way sceptical. And it's funny because Kevin Dern and Josh Kashka had a conversation on, on Twitter just, just today kind of saying, you know, for all of the bad things that Brian Flores brought to Miami, he still had an ability to win games on a Sunday. And, you know, Mike McDaniel needs to win on a Sunday. All, like, he's infectious. Players want to run through the wall, you know, through a wall for him. This whole, no one wants to come to Miami with two at quarterback and a rookie head coach. Look who's come through, look who's come through the front door. At the same time, we need wins. The one thing I will say is when you listen to not just him speak, but the players speak about what's going on in that building right now, it's difficult to not get excited. It's difficult to not sit back and go, AFC, AFC East, AFC in general, like we are coming for the AFC. So, you know, it's, I just want the season to start. Like, please give, give me the season right now because this team is going to be a lot of fun this year. Bro, I think the under the over under for the Miami Dolphins is now nine, and it could be creeping up to nine and a half. 
but whatever. It came in at eight and a half, and I wish I would have caught it at eight and a half because I would have bet the house. I would have bet the house that Dolphins are going to go over eight and a half games. And I haven't looked at it lately, but if it's still nine, just know Charlie Touche is out here and is about that life. Sherrod Steve said, oh, if you were a betting man, and you actually are, you're right, Sherrod Steve. I actually am. In moderation, if you need help with gambling, I suggest you really do get checked out. Holler at somebody. Talk about it. It can really get serious. I actually had a gambling problem once upon a time, and I put that out there, and I have no shame in it. Like, yo, I, I was down bad before. Like, damn, I need to slow this thing down. But I'm back on the wagon. <laughs> no, but like I said, in moderation, I got I got it fixed up. Listen, man, I'm I'm taking the Dolphins in nine games for sure, and nine and a half. Let's do it. You're not saying nothing, but man, I want to go back to that orange jersey. Jalen Waddle has a catch on social media with with uh, in practice, uh, and Teddy two gloves put the prettiest ball in the air, slightly behind him, but it was the prettiest ball. And I wanted to bring this up for a couple of days now because everyone wants to report all the foolishness. Everyone wants to talk about all the nonsense. No one ever wants to talk about the good, like, oh, this is solid. We need to share this. Oh, the media needs to talk about this. Because we are, I guess now, Kadeem, a part of the media, quote unquote, we have to share this. And when I see, what, what was that? I've been a part of the media for the past seven hey, years. Hey, I said we. I said we, bro. I'm not, I, I was never a part of the media. Like, you were a journalist. Like, I'm not really like, hey, this is a platform now, and we share information. So it's us now. It's a t I, th I thought we ride together. We die together. Bad boys for life. No, 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 no. We ride together. We die together. But we live. We live to fight another day. That is the go time Dolphin saying. Like... <laughs> Whatever, bro. Listen, man. <laughs> Teddy Two Gloves, for everyone who doesn't know it, Teddy Two Gloves has a quote out there. And he said this a few days ago. And I just felt compelled to share it because it does not get enough attention. And there are few players that really talk like this. But we need to share this. And Teddy Two Gloves, and he wasn't talking about, you know, it was, it was just something coming from Miami, Florida, like myself. Teddy Two Gloves from the bottom of the map. When he said this, it hit home for me because it's the realest thing. Because you're for so many of us, we're a product of our environment. And not just if you're in, in Miami, Florida, but wherever you're from, wherever you're raised in, your household, all that good stuff. You're still a product of your environment. And you have things that you have to overcome. Some of us have to overcome a lot more than others. But that being said, man, Teddy Two Gloves hit us with a quote. And I loved it. And he said, I'm tired of seeing football players portray this tough guy image or pretend he's gangster. You went to school, attended those classes, and some even got their college degree. So don't wait until you inherit this legal money from the league to decide you want to be a tough guy or portray a street image. Because it's kids out there that are looking up to us and everything we do. Teddy Two Gloves. Bro, shout out to Teddy, man. That's solid. Of course, you don't hear that all the time. You don't get that on, on Twitter. But yeah, man, Teddy, Ted, Teddy Two Gloves, born and raised in South Florida. We rock with you, Holmes. It's um, yeah, that it's it's a powerful message he sent because you get the situation where there were some players who make it to the league, and yeah, for whatever reason, they kind of wanna. I don't know. I'm saying this. I don't. I don't say that they portray a bad boy image, but they kind of forget that. Not so much that they're role models, but the things they were doing in the background while playing college football. You know, while playing college football, they don't need to do no more. And it's you know, you look at someone, someone who spent a very, very, very brief time in Miami, but like Damon Arnett, who I believe once again was arrested this week. Um, no way. Yep, I'm listening. Hey, you want you want to uh, remind people who Damon Arnett is? So Damon Arnett was a first round pick by the Raiders in 2019. Cornerback, 
cornerback here. That actually might be one of the worst draft classes of all time because, like, that's what Henry. Was that Henry Ruggs as well. Yeah, I believe that was Henry Ruggs. Yeah, I think that was Henry Ruggs and uh, Isaiah Wilson. Yeah, and you know, I, was it twenty one or twenty? Twenty twenty. But it, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll double check that as well. But yes, yeah, so Damon Arnett, first round pick, pick nineteen, corner went to the Raiders. Um, by the following year, he was off the team. Um, this was a video of him was released, basically threatening someone, and he had like guns and making death threats. The Raiders cut him. The Dolphins picked him up. Um, put him on the practice squad. Lasted less than a month. The Chiefs picked him up in 2022. Um, and then, so they picked him up in January. He was released nine days later. Um, f- uh, he was arrested on charges of assault with a deadly weapon, carrying a concealed weapon without a permit, and two counts of possession, possession of controlled substances in Las Vegas. This week, so j- July 2022, Pulled over, found to have a suspended license. Um, he was released with the police allowing the passenger to drive the vehicle. And then a day later, pulled over again, driving the same car, and this time placed under arrest, charged with possession of controlled substance, possession of drug paraphernalia, and driving on a suspended license. This was a first round pick two years ago. Why are you trying to live a life which you don't need to do? And I know you know this is a training camp, but it, to me, if if it it kind of like dovetails nicely with what Teddy Bridgewater was saying, like you don't need to be doing this, you don't need to portray this kind of lifestyle when you are an NFL player. Hey, <clears throat> yeah, man. Listen, I'm not gonna lie. There's so much to be excited about that we're gonna go to some 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 stuff to smile about. And Tua said this a couple of days ago, and he said, if I can't hear you, then that means you're not important to me. What you make of Tua with the A? Hey, I don't I don't care about I don't care about the, the Twitter people. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we heard him say that before, but the, the quotes are coming about a little uh, coming out a little more harsh now. Like, oh, if I can't hear you, you you're not important to me. What you make of the uh, tough guy Tua? How about that? There was it might have been Rich Eisen. He was like, this is the two that people want to see. Like, clap back. Like, again, <laughs> this is, this like, like, it's clap back season. Like, there were so, like, there were so many people on Twitter, in the media who, you know, two were under throws of pass in training. Worldwide news. Why? And like, he's, and there's even Dolphins fans, because of course, saying, oh, why is he talking for? You know, why, if he, if he can't hear you, then why did he mention it for us? Like, no, he's just ignoring you. He can no, like like he said earlier, he he, he gets told about it. The media asking questions all the all the time. He's like, I don't care, unless you're in my circle, unless unless you're perform, unless you're my coaches, unless you're my teammates, your opinion doesn't matter to me because you don't see me grinding. And it's really funny. We will stick, stick on to it, but did you see what Chase Ed, what Chase Edmonds said today? Nah. So he said, um. Basically, he said, when I came here, I was thinking, S-word, how far was he going to throw it in terms of Tua? That's how bad the media is. He, you know, so, and then, you know, he goes on to say, um, you know, now he's seen him in training. Now he's seen him up front and personal. Um, Tua's arm is plenty strong. He said he was a Heidman finalist for a reason. The number one quarterback out of high school for a reason. The fifth overall pick for a reason. And then he goes on to say, the OC and the offense, the way it was run, was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. He just didn't have the right pieces around him. Now he had the right pieces, it would just be fine. So again, it's like, unless you're Chase Edmonds, unless you're Tyreek Hill, unless you're Nick Hicks, unless you're, you know, someone inside the building or someone he he trusts, he, he, he does not care what you have to say. And rightfully so. So listen, He's not just going to, you know, say it in the media. He's going to back it up on Sundays. He's going to back up when we're playing, you know, Thursday night football, Monday night football. He's going to back up in the playoffs. Right. The cutback season. 
hundred percent. Bro, shout out to RB One Chase Edmonds. Um, not drinking the Kool Aid like, oh man, I gotta go play with Tua, and then he gets here and like, ah, oh, what's what was all the fuss about? Basically, is what you just said. Um, and then the little jab at the offense of last year, like oh, the offense was terrible. I, I had to come in and watch film, something that other quarterbacks don't do. Like since I'm the new running back, I wanted to see what the film was last year. So Chase Edmonds coming in and watching film of the Dolphins last year and noticed something that everyone else noticed that they didn't have offense. So um, not only did Chase Edmonds notice it, Barry Jackson, beat writer for Miami Dolphins, um, had the tweet of the freaking day. And it, it is, I love it, bro. I like we we I, we might might have mentioned Barry Jackson a couple of times on the on the show, but I'm gonna read it ver- verbatim. Barry Jackson, McDaniel will relay play call. All right, my bad. McDaniel will relay play calls directly to Tua, as opposed to last year when Godsey delivered them in Morris code, sent to Charlie Fry, who then sent them to Tua via pigeon. Bro. I'm so ready for the season to start, bro. I'm so ready. There's a a a, a scene in Ocean's Eleven where George Clooney is recruiting for his his squad, basically, and he 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 goes to get Don Cheadle. And how, how was Don Cheadle's uh, accent in that movie? If I could swear right now, it is awful. It is so bad. Wait, wait. First of all, you seen the movie? I've seen all of Ocean, I've seen Ocean's That's, 11. Hey, I, I, I had no. I thought I was going to get You know I haven't seen I've it. Seen, I've seen Ocean's 8. I've seen all the movies. It was, it was, it was bad. Ocean's 8 was pretty good, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying, yeah, but I'm talking about, like, yeah, the, the accent is. Like, it's it's a, he tries to do the, remember we said, like, ages ago. on Cockley Rhyme and Slay? Yeah, that's what he yeah. tries to do. And it just, like, you're having a bubble, mate. I, I'm telling you now, yeah, Javon Holland has a better UK accent than Don Cheadle. Shout out to friend of the podcast, Javon Holland, came on to this show and hit us, dropped some gems. <laughs> what, did he, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come out those trousers, mate. <laughs> bruv, hey, bruv. Oh, nah, uh, nah so Cheadle's accent wasn't, wasn't that deal? Nah, not at all. All right, uh, so anyway, in the movie, George Clooney approaches uh, Don Cheadle to recruit him and basically says, hey, man, we need you. And Don Cheadle says, oh, it's going to be it's going to be nice to be working with some proper villains again. All right. And that's how I feel about the Dolphins. It's going to be nice to be watching real coaches coach. This is not a shot at Brian Flores. We already know Brian Brian Flores won games. He was a winner. Brian Flores is a good coach. And we've, we said that before he was fired, during his firing, and after he, he was fired, Brian Flores is a solid coach. He just doesn't have the offensive acumen that we needed for the Dolphins. That's it. The the uh, the turnover on the offense. When I say turnover, I'm not talking about turning the ball over. The turnover on the coaching staff, the O line never got fixed, bro. It's not gonna happen with, for Flores. So yeah, uh, it's gonna be nice to watch proper coaches coach again for the Miami Dolphins, and we're gonna watch a team have a top five, a top ten offense and a top ten defense. And we're gonna see what we get, and we're about to go on this playoff run, and we're gonna we're gonna have our our, our soon enough we're gonna have real predictions uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, and we're gonna put it put it on the chalk. It's um, you mentioned the coaches, you know, and real coaches and stuff like that. From what we're hearing from training, I'm seeing you know Austin Jackson is looking very improved. Two names. One name I did not expect to hear, one name I'm glad I, I heard. True Williams making plays, which is great. They're saying Noah's making plays. I'm like, or like, or like at least or Noah looks productive. It's just like, are they re- like, is this really what we're saying? And especially 
you know, it's, it's not like nobody's going up against Isaiah Ford, who left the team will be back soon. Isaiah Ford always finds way back to Miami. Like, he's going up against you no know, Tyree Kill and stuff like that. And he's doing really, really well. Um, you know, Tua hasn't thrown an interception yet in training camp. Once he does, it's going to be, oh, my day for an interception, the world's going to completely end. But, you know, they're saying he's he, he's throwing deep. He's throwing, he's throwing passes where only the wide receiver can get it. And it's it's scary. I just found another um, another Chase Edmonds. If I can find it exactly what he said, he. If you haven't read the Chase Edmonds article, it is amazing, and some of the stuff he says. Um, so Edmonds says everything feeds off each other. We'll we'll do a zoom motion and we'll run outside zone. We'll do that zoom motion with Tyree Kill. And that's why about the jet sweep. Then we might do a zoom motion, and instead of the outside zone, we do a zoom motion, play action, and Tyreek is going to the flat. Those two plays are the exact same play. The only difference is that you've handed the ball off, and you didn't hand the ball off on the other one. So now, everybody on defense has to be super disciplined in their gaps, super disciplined in their assignments, their techniques. One misfit, and he literally taps his fingers. You've got an outside zone for 20 yards. One misfit and you've got Tyree Kill in the flat for 20 yards. One misfit and you've got two as grambling 10 yards for a first down. There are a lot of outcomes in the same play that look the same, but it's really not. I'm reading this. I'm just going, are the Dolphins running an NFL offense next year? I'm like, <laughs> this this can't be true. And I think Tyree Kill added on to that. It was like, you know, the way this, I've, I believe his, his whole quote is basically, when he first came in the building, he didn't understand the playbook at all. The verbiage, all of it was just like, nope, don't understand it. But now he understands it. He's like, I'm going to be free. Like, I'm going to be wide open. I'm scoring touchdown after touchdown because the ball will be delivered to me. And the way the plays are set up, the plays are, you know, set up to have someone open. And I'm sure we've had this conversation. If not me and you, it was one of the episodes when you was off. And I believe it was um, Chris Adams from the, from, from the Finns tailgate. But we was like, why... Why do all the Dolphin scoring drives look like it's like an absolute chore? It looks like, you know, it's the hardest thing in the whole entire mm-hmm. world. You know, there's never even any like busted coverages. No one's wide open down the field. It looks like from next se- or from this season, guys are going to be open down the field. It's going to be, you know, play action, wide open, boom, touch down, done. Do you know, do you know how good that's going to feel? <sighs> I can't remember uh, Buster covers when uh, Albert Wilson was running wide open down the sideline and Tua hit him in stride. Um, but what you were saying about Adam Gase, even with Adam Gase, there were still plays where the play schemed somebody open. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, these plays, like Adam Gase was still, you can't say he wasn't a good offensive coordinator. Um, so when you have a genius calling the plays and Tua is, don't don't have to go through seven OCs and quarterback coaches and man bro I cannot imagine how how good this is going to feel and how better it's going to feel in the season after this because it takes a season to install. We're do it, still doing install. But we're going to be fine. We're going to be good. We're going to the Super Bowl next year. For those who don't know, if you're just tuning in to Go Time Dolphins, 2023, we're going to the Super Bowl. Uh, this season, we're going to see what happens. But we're going to go. We're going to make the playoffs. Charlie Touche said it. And I want everybody to come back and say, man, I don't know how you did that. And I've been saying this since we, we, we drafted Tua. We're going to get there on his rookie contract. I'm a believer. And it's, it's going to happen. Um, two two quick things from me. Have you seen the reported starting five on the offensive line and what Mike McDaniel said about Melvin Ingram? Melvin Ingram playing on special teams? No. So apparently he wasn't meant to train today and he basically begged the coaching staff to let him in. And when he was in, he was a house on fire. And McDaniel was saying that's what he loved to see, you know, loves to see veterans basically, you know, wanting to be on the field, wanting to make plays, because it also shows, or also sends a message to the to the younger guys, 
This is this is the energy we need. And also, we kind of didn't discuss it before I get to, before I talk about the offensive line thing. I believe the Dolphins aren't going to have that many training camp sessions, and I think it's but they're going to be shorter. So it's going to be basic. I think McDaniel was saying that it's all about you know quality over quantity, and you know basically going 100 miles an hour, 24 seven. So there's no wasted reps, no wasted time. And I believe the two the two sessions so far have been just under two hours. I think Thursday's one was like 100 minutes. But again, like no one's complaining. And even the beat writers are saying it looks good. It looks tight. It looks like they are, you know, hitting the field, doing what they need to do. Everyone's on point. Everyone's focused. And then they go. Is there a question in there? Well, yes, I said uh, offensive line thing as well. Have you heard about the offensive? offensive <laughs> line? I, I literally said that. Yeah, but then you went on a soliloquy, so I couldn't catch up. But now, what, what what's the O line start five? I thought we went over it. Is it different from what we said it was about a month ago? But yeah, it's basically, what we thought. Um, Toronto Toron Arm said left tackle, Eichenberg left guard, Connor Williams center, Robert Hunt right guard, and Austin from the podcast Austin Jackson at right tackle. Which also, have you seen what Mike McDaniel said about when they picked up Connor Williams? Yes. And correct me if I'm wrong. Mike McDaniel said we didn't pick him up. We didn't add him to be a left guard. We added him to be an O-lineman. And we believe he's he's a good center. So we're going to put him where where he where we feel like he's best at. Pretty much, yeah. Um, Again, not what I wanted to hear. Mm-hmm. But at the same time... It seems like from the, at least publicly, they're saying that from day one, they had a plan. And that plan was to get him into the building and utilise his strengths. And they said that his athleticism, his strength, his you know football IQ means he's a better centre. So still not happy about it, but I guess that probably puts to bed any conversation of JT Tretter, you know, becoming a Miami Dolphin this summer. I ain't gonna lie. On the same episode, I said when Mike McDaniel speaks, I trust him, but I don't believe him. <laughs> <laughs> not, not on that one, Holmes. I can't do it, bro. You, you ain't got to lie to me. You ain't got to lie, Craig. You ain't got to lie. What movie is that? Friday. All right, let's start this. What part? What scene? Uh, is it when uh, Craig's girlfriend calls him? And she says that some, someone saw you with um, some girls. Like, it wasn't me. And, like, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, man. Uh, so here's about this. I guess I should finally answer your question. I think Eichenberg will fare well, well at guard, left guard, because he's a left tackle, and now he will be protected by a left tackle in Teron Armstead on the inside. So, in essence, the same way Austin Jackson performed better at left guard than he did at left tackle is the same way it it should work out to where Eichenberg performs better at left guard than at left tackle or right tackle or tackle period. So, so yeah, you're going to have success with Eichenberg. You should really have plenty of success with Eichenberg at guard and – Right tackle is a question mark. I think we'll have a better, uh, better, better results. We'll have better results at, in in a run game when it comes to right tackle than the passing game. But I I trust I trust Austin Jackson, bro. Like not just because he's a friend of the podcast. I really trust Austin Jackson at right tackle. I told you I trusted him more than Eichenberg at right tackle. So I just wish we had a center. So Connor Williams could play left guard, and then we could have Eichenberg play, be the the six man, and he could play from left guard or left tackle all the way to right tackle except center. In essence, he would be a second round Jesse Davis. I don't love it, but we would have depth on the O line. So just know that O line is going to be super solid, not this season, but next season as well. That's why it all all everything is lining up. For next season, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have some pretty good results this season. Um, y'all come on over to bonus time with us, man. Y'all know what time it is. Stay positive, test negative. For Kadeem Simmons, I'm Charlie Touche. 
Thank you for tuning in this time. Make sure you catch us next time on Go Time. Already. Make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Don't waste no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Uh, hey, if you helped us out and you, you gave us a five star rating on on iTunes, and we had the debacle where we couldn't see the ratings and everything, check your email. We told you we were gonna we were gonna uh, give you some free dolphin merch. Check your email. We need shipping addresses, and we're taking care of you for sure. For sure. What you got, Kadeem? Um, shout out to. Uh some someone hit us up on Twitter asking to be in the fantasy league. Um and I believe it might have been Nick Kerr or someone else was like we gotta get um Mike McDrip in there. And I believe Mike McDrip is happy for it. Um so it's still I found it. So it was Josh Ritter, I believe. Oh all good. Well so um, go ahead, go ahead. Um, did this guy get rid of his camera but didn't mute himself? The people he has to work with these days. Um, so yeah, it was Josh Ritter. Um, NorCal Finns. Um, said if you need a player, I'd love to join. Kadeem could, could hit, hit panic. Well, that was a uh, 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 <laughs> what happened to navigating in the dirty pocket? I, I, I was I I navigating, that was me. Oh, nah, but you, you, no. like, uh. uh uh, uh, uh. <laughs> very quickly you see the um before we get to, uh, uh, right on my mind you see the Raiders during training camp done like a it was scramble drill so like the coach is going to Derek Carr right 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 and he's kind of scrambling left and there's a rusher coming towards him he's like left 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 and the oncoming defender kind of runs into him and the coach is like god damn and it's like someone is doing laps that coach was not happy with that defender um no nah. I, I didn't see that, but I, I do know coaches where if you fighting with another teammate, um, and you disturb practice, you got to hold that teammate's hand and, and and walk laps with that teammate while you hold his hand. <laughs> yeah, bro, like you not y'all not gonna fight on my on my time on a team's time. Y'all y'all hold each other's hand and y'all y'all do laps, walk it out, Shit. holding each other's hand. That's how you fix that. Um. So yeah, so Noel Calfins at Josh Rich, at Josh Ritter thirteen. So if you need a player, I'd love to join. You know the Go Time Dolphins account said, "I'm sure Nick Kerr would welcome the challenge." Nick Kerr was like, "We need Mike Madrip." Mike Madrip was like, "I'm down," and then I got involved, and I was like, "If you make it a championship belt and not a ring, then we'll see." At which point, Josh Casker was like, "You know, eyes emoji." Um, Hello, hello. Everybody just joined the, the, the tweet. <laughs> Dude, this is one a tweet. Things. Yeah, it's a tweet, yeah. Bro, can somebody at me, bro? Can I get an at? Listen, I listen, the Go Time Dolphins account added or added Nick Kerr because you know Nick it's me fair. This this whole thing started from Josh Katska saying, can't wait to play in the Go Time Dolphins fantasy football. And then someone, you know, like, can they get involved? Um, although now I'm reading it, he might have been asking to get involved in the Dolphin Talk League, but at this point, mm-hmm. Go Time Dolphin took over. Um, so yeah, so hey, shout out to the, uh, our friends over at Same Old Dolphins and, and Josh Casker and Aaron Casker, Aaron the Brain. Oh, completely forgot. I am so 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 sorry. Shout out to Kevin Dern, another little girl, go dad times two. I've been saying no episode, I apologize. Don't shake your head. You forgot as well. Don't even try that. So, congratulations. That, Kevin that was your thing, though. I can't. I, <laughs> I thought you were saving it. I think you did there. But yeah, shout out Kevin Dern. Um, go dad times too. Hope the whole family are happy. Um, before we do leave, have you seen slash heard Kyler Murray's um interview? Yeah, I'm not buying what he's selling. Listen, people were saying, yeah. Kyle Murray can say what he wants. 
the fact that it was in the contract means there's issues. Teams are very, very, very specific what they put in the contract because they don't want to get caught out. And if they have to hold your feet to the fire for you to basically watch, you know, tape for four hours and not just watch tape while TV's in the background. No, eyes on the screen watch tape. You have a problem, sir. You have a problem. So Kyle and Marvin can try and do this whole, you don't get to where I am, you know, not working hard. Some people do. Some people literally get to the league on pure, pure Ability. talent. Yeah, yep. 100%. So, and, and also as well, he signed a contract. So, <laughs> like, he, he knows every single thing is in that contract. And if he doesn't, read your contract, you small person, nothing wrong with small people, but he's small. And two, we're going to get cancelled. 100% going to get cancelled. Episode 216, guys, it's been fun. We've enjoyed it. Um, I took it too far. Um, took a shot at Kyle and Murray, and that was the end of Go Time Dolphins. But no. Um, but we ride together, and we die together. Bad boys for life. I should just end it there. There's no point. Um, before we go, yeah, I just want a massive shout out to, and it sounds weird. No, it doesn't sound weird. Massive shout out to Troy Williams, who's taken his chance in training camp. Massive shout out to Noah Igbenogany, who's making the most of Byron Jones not being there. And it's not a surprise. We had an episode on it a couple of weeks ago where we were like, breakout stars this year, friend of the podcast, Javon Holland, Jalen Phillips. Apparently, both are balling. People are saying Javon Holland looks even better than he did last year. He's making plays. He's all over the field. Listen. Bro, I wonder if we could get him back. We should holler at him. See if, we, dude, see if we get a sequel. Dude, if, if he's coming back, bring Troy Williams as well. Like You know, so I'm not, we're not going to spoil nothing. But just know how close we y'all don't even know. Oh. Y'all, hey, Go Time Dolphins don't even know the stuff that are that were that that the things that were in the works and the things that are in the works. Y'all just don't know. Y'all, y'all, y'all lay around for it.